Welcome to Operating Systems Unit 9 on Process Synchronizations. This is uh, video one. Today we're going to talk about a software solution to the critical section problem called semaphores. So semaphores are a software solution that use atomic methods in order to control access to the critical section. So an atomic method just means that it is a set of instructions that are treated as if they're one instruction. And there are three operations that semaphores do. It's just a global variable, and these operations are part of the code in the critical, uh, the critical controlling the critical section of the multiple processes. The number of processes that share a semaphore is on is it doesn't matter. There's not a limit on it. It's just the way the semaphore is used. So there are three oper operations. The first is initialization. There's wait and there's signal. So the wait operation looks like this. The wait means that uh, usually it would be in the entry code of the processes before the critical data before the critical data is accessed, and all the processes would run their wait. So if the if the semaphore is initialized say to one, and all the processes ran, ran their wait, the first one that uh, ran its wait would be the one that would hold and own the critical section, because if you take a look at this, it says while s is less than or equal to zero, then you must wait and you cannot move. But if s happened to be one, then this process would be the one that would decrement the s and change it to zero. So it would then own the lock. So uh, I'm going to go over an example in a minute. I'm just giving you an overview right now. And then after the semaphore is released or when the critical data is becomes available, the other operation is called a signal. And all signal does is increment. It increments it back up again. So you can see if you have errant signals and a global variable, uh, you may have issues with controlling access to the critical data because the signal, all a signal does here is change the value of the global variable. And there are different types of semaphores. There are binary semaphores and counting semaphores. A binary semaphore means that the semaphore can only have two values, 0 and 1. And a counting semaphore means a semaphore can have multiple values. And then there are standard semaphores like this in which uh, while the processes wait, they basically sit there checking the semaphore and checking and checking uh, using CPU cycles in order to check, which is called busy waiting. And then there's complex semaphores, which have processes uh, they're waiting. And that's what this is. This is a complex semaphore. So we'll assume that the semaphore is initialized to 1. And this is a binary semaphore, so it has only two values, 0 and 1. So the wait operation is like this. If, if the semaphore is 0, that means that either the critical data is not ready or another process is inside the critical section then this process is going to have to block itself and wait. Otherwise, this, if the semaphore value happens to be 1, remember a binary semaphore can only be 0 or 1, then this process will decrement the semaphore and then go into the critical section. And then when it's done, uh, if the semaphore is 0 and there's a process waiting, rather than changing the value back to 1 and having the other ones check, it's just going to wake up the next the next one is going to get notified and get woken up the one that's in the front of the queue this is another example of a different queue that's in the system a queue for uh, synchronization and if there is no process waiting then you'll just this process when it exits we will just uh, increment so let's do uh, let's just review a semaphore is a global variable that has three operations initialization wait and signal Semaphores can either be binary or counting. A binary semaphore has two values, 0 and 1. A counting semaphore can have any numerical value. Uh, a, the types of semaphores, you can have a standard semaphore like the first one I showed you where the weight just uh, ha does no operation if it's, less than, if it's less than or equal to 0 and decrements if it is greater than 0. And that's a binary semaphore. Or a standard semaphore could also be a counting semaphore. And then the second example we looked at where, you, where the process would block while waiting is called a complex semaphore. And that could either be binary, meaning the global variable could have a, the value 0 and 1, or it could be counting. Now we're just going to do a little example here. Uh, pretend that you're at a doctor's office. And the way that there's no receptionist, so the way to control access to the doctor's office is 
by a number on the door of the doctor's office. So when uh, you arrive in the doctor's office, uh, say for example, the first one to arrive would be the doctor and the doctor, if you were to arrive and there's a zero on the door, that would mean to you either that someone is in there with the doctor or that the doctor has not arrived yet. So the doctor is going to arrive and the doctor is going to signal and change it to a one, which if you take a look at the weight, that means that if I arrive and I see a one on the door, that means that the doctor is going to be in there and ready and waiting for a patient to arrive. So there's a one on the door and patient N is going to arrive and run the weight. So here comes patient N, sees that there's a one in the door, changes the one to a zero and is in there now with the doctor. So patient N is in there with the doctor and there's a zero on the door because that indicates that the doctor is busy and not available and patient N is in the critical, is in the using the critical data which is the doctor. Now another process P1 arrives and checks the weight and P1 is not able to go in. P3 arrives and checks the weight and P2 arrives and these are busy waiting. They're just cycling around and they just keep checking their weight, checking their weight, checking their weight uh, until eventually P, uh, Pn finishes, runs the signal, changes the value to one and now P1 will run the weight and then P1 will then be in there with the doctor and any other processes that come along will also have to wait. So that's a, just a scenario of a basic standard semaphore, uh, but using this numerical value on the door of the doctor's office. So now uh, we're going to move on to the same scenario only with a complex semaphore. So there's a zero on the door, the doctor arrives, puts the signal and now the doctor is in there and ready to see any patients that are going to arrive. So PN arrives, runs the wait, goes here. If S is equal to zero, I block in Q. If it's not equal to zero, I'm going to decrement. So P, the patient here is going to decrement it to zero and will be in there, the doctor. So now PN is in there with the doctor and there's a zero on the door, which indicates that the doctor is busy and not available. So P1 will come along, run the wait, and we'll notice that uh, P1 needs to block in Q. P3 comes along, P3 needs to block in Q, P2 comes along, P2 needs to block in Q. So uh, they're all there on the couch in the order in which they arrived, or maybe the receptionist put them in an order, and they are blocking and waiting to see the doctor. So if you take a look now, this uh, one on the end here, when P, uh, N is finished, PN is going to signal. So take a look on the right end here where the red arrow is pointing. Instead of PN changing the value from a zero to a one, PN is gonna come out and wake up this one who's in the front of the queue and allow her to go in to see the doctor. So now she's in there with the doctor and the zero is still on the door. So when P1 finishes, she'll, she will go out and wake up the next person and they will go in and so on until eventually the last patient is finished with the doctor and will change it to a one, in which case the doctor would be sitting in there and waiting for the next patient to arrive. So here's an example of a counting semaphore and I'm going to record this, uh, make an animation out of this counting semaphore example and it, that will be part two. So thank you very much. In the next video, I will do the example of the counting semaphore.